What you are about to watch is the lion's wealth process when it comes to wealth transfer. So we have a lot that we dive into as it pertains to wealth transfer and what that means for you and the people you care about. Enjoy. Growing up, there are two musicians that I followed, Prince and Michael Jackson. Both were fantastic artists, both had a lot going from them, uh, both had this massive amount of storytelling in their music as well as just the incredible ability to bring a new element to the music that had never been done before. But the one thing and the one characteristic that really brought Prince and Michael Jackson together is the fact that neither of them had a wealth transfer plan. Now, in the case of both of them, uh, upon their passing, they really had some issues, uh, the family did, to transfer the assets. There was a lot of fighting that started to occur over the assets themselves, and that led to well, court battles, that led to a lot of different things. And the aspect of wealth transfer is really coming down to the, to the part that you don't want that to happen. You want to have a plan in place. And we can sit here and say, yes, uh, Michael Jackson, or yes, Prince, they should have had a plan in place. But we can also say the same thing about you. We can also say the same thing about your plans as well. You see, we don't need to have hundreds of millions of dollars to have a wealth transfer plan. We need to have one dollar. And when we talk about taxes, uh, we've already covered the fact that Benjamin Franklin said it well, that the only guarantees or certainties in life are death and taxes. So if we can uh, really plan for our death by way of the transfer, we can also plan for the taxes that happen upon that in the same manner. Well, those two elements, those two elements, yes, they may be certainties, but we can really start to make sure that they have less of an issue than what they should or may have had prior to putting a wealth transfer plan in place. So let's dive into some details here. And really there are only two steps. So these two steps are gonna be vitally important though to make sure that you have everything taken care of. And I don't want you to sit here and say, even though there are two steps, that this is gonna be a simple process. Unfortunately, it is a little more in depth, but it's more in depth based upon what your thoughts are and what your wishes are. So the more you know what your wishes are, who and to what you want to be gifting your money to, then that really comes down to say it can be a lot easier of a process. So that's the absolute first step to start figuring out who do I want to transfer my money to or what organizations or corporations do I want to be transferring my money to. You see, we can actually be transferring to say your spouse or your children or to other family members or maybe even to people that are not even related to you. So we have the ability to do that. We have the ability to transfer to those people. But we can also be transferring to some organizations that are philanthropic. So ones that you care about, ones that are going to support the community engagements that you want, uh, to leave your legacy, your mark on the world with respect to the, the things you care about. That's also something we can do. We can be transferring in that manner. But then the third aspect is maybe there are corporations that you want to be leaving assets to as well. So we can be going to an individual, we can be going to some philanthropic charitable organizations or just even some corporations that are out there. All of those different elements come back down to the who or the what you want to be transferring your money to. So knowing that is actually going to help in every other aspect of what we're going to be talking about. So start with the who, and that leads us into step number two, the last step in the process, which is the how. So we have the who and we have the how. Now the how really comes back down to then, what does this mean for you? What does this mean for the taxes? And do you want to be transferring before you pass or after you pass. You see, that obviously is a change. We can be transferring to, say, your children, and you can do so on a yearly basis before you pass, 
Well, there's going to be some elements that are going to be different than if we transfer those stocks or those assets after you pass. Let me give you an example here. So if we're taking a look at, say, just transferring some assets to your children, well, if we do that while you are still living, we can actually be gifting them a certain amount of money every single year, and we don't even need to file a gift tax return. Now, if you're married, you can be gifting money to that individual. Your spouse can be gifting money to your child as well. And neither one would have to be qualifying for that uh, gift tax return if you stay underneath the limits. Well, obviously, that may not be enough. So if we go over those limits, that's just fine too. It just means that we have to file a gift tax return and it goes against your basically your lifetime credit of how much you can transfer. So it's not that big a deal if we are underneath those limits and we don't need to pay tax because we have an exemption, a lifetime exemption that will be covered a lot of these transfers. Now, yes, this exemption goes up and down based upon who's in uh, the office, who's in the presidency, who's in Congress. Uh, a lot of times with the different tax laws that come out, they can be changed. So it's vitally important to know where you're at today. But it doesn't mean that you are going to have to pay tax on all of this money that you transfer. It may mean a portion of it, but in the, the essence of what we're talking about today, most likely between what you're going to be transferring that is tax free. So up to the limits that you can transfer without even having to file a gift tax return, the amount of money that you're going to be gifting over that most likely is going to be covered by the exemptions that are in place. So it's very possible that you do not even need to pay tax when you transfer money to other individuals on a say yearly basis. That's vitally important to know. And what's also vitally important to know is that most likely when you transfer that money, so whether it's uh, based upon stocks, so those assets of stocks, bonds, uh, real estate, things like that, that will go to the individual and they're going to take over the tax element of it. So it won't even come back to you if you're not going to be selling it before you gift it to them. That's also important to know. So knowing who has the tax element is going to be helpful. And there's going to be other ways to utilize this, to work with this. Maybe it's something we want to be transferring business that you have or other elements. And just knowing those tax consequences is going to be very helpful to plan for how you can be transferring the money with the least amount of tax owed. Okay, so that's basically how we can go about transferring some elements while you are still living. <clears throat> well, other elements are going to be transferred upon your passing. We can do that in a couple of ways. We can do that by probate, and we can also do that by going outside of probate. So probate is just by the court system. Probate is actually good and very, very useful, especially with individuals that have a lot of debts. You see that there's a formal process. It's a formal way that we can actually be systematically going through the court system and allowing debts to be fulfilled, obligations to be fulfilled. And then once it's sealed, once it's closed off, there are no more debtors that can come back against those assets. That's going to be very helpful if you do have some debts that are outstanding that you want to be cleared. Now, this is also a process. So this is where the will comes into place of dictating and directing those assets. Well, what happens if we don't want to go through probate? What happens if we just want to be transferring the assets outright? That's where other elements step in. So first of all, with your retirement accounts, that's where beneficiaries come into play. Beneficiaries are going to be vitally important to transfer money to the intended people on a quick basis and without any probate, without any issues, they just go to those individuals. So the first thing you actually need to do then is to make sure that those beneficiaries are up to date, especially if you have a mixed family, especially if you have a situation in your family that it may be a little more well, I guess uh, different than others. So this could be maybe say uh, children that 
you want to be splitting up how you want those assets to go maybe uh, more to one versus the other that can happen but it's only going to happen if you have the beneficiaries done correctly so that comes back to making sure the beneficiaries are done correctly well we have other elements that we can be transferring to you can do your house you can do cars you can do bank accounts you can do many other aspects by a transfer on death claim what transfer on death is is saying maybe uh, your accounts that are not retirement accounts ones that don't by definition by law have beneficiaries on them we can actually be putting beneficiaries on them so we have beneficiaries we have transfer on death we have trust accounts that can be utilizing a lot more aspects of how we can be transferring money based upon your wishes and based upon maybe say age of the individual or going to other organizations going to charitable organizations we can do a lot with trust and this is think of it sky's the limit with your thought process and we can write that into the trust and and the language of how to do that based upon your wishes well then it also comes back down to the different insurances different aspects that you have there that is is and will be directed to the people to the organizations to the corporations that you care about so it is something that can happen and it will happen regardless if you have a formalized process or not so if you do not have a formalized process you all assets will go through probate all assets will be subject to the state laws which are the intestate laws and those will just be pushed forward now if you allow your accounts to do that some may be taxed in ways that you don't want especially if you want to be leaving them and leaving more money as a legacy so we want to make sure that that's buttoned up. We want to make sure that we have the elements of your wealth going to the intended people at the intended time with the least amount of tax possible. Now, that's the element of what we want to be doing here at Lions Wealth. You see, when we talk about the impact that you can create, we can create an impact with your wealth. So that's the impact that you want. See, you may want to be leaving a legacy of money for your children just to go to college, to better their life than what you knew, uh, to actually maybe take care of grandkids, things like that. That can be an impact. But we also can be talking about creating an impact with the charities that you support. So maybe it's your church. Maybe it is an organization that is bringing clean water to third world countries. Whatever it is, there are many elements of these uh, charitable organizations that are going to be great to be involved in and directing your money is going to help with that legacy as well and helping you to make that impact. So there's going to be many ways that you can make this impact. And that's what we here at Lions Wealth are all about, helping to make that impact for your family, for you individually, for your community, for the, again, for the uh, organizations that you care about, those philanthropic organizations, and even your company. So there's gonna be a lot there that you can create this impact and having the wealth transfer plan helps with that. So yes, there's only two steps. Yes, there's only things uh, that, you know, again from others that you need to be taking care of those two steps, the who and the how, but how we direct that, how we look into this, how we think about this actually makes this a bigger deal than many other aspects that you're gonna be talking about with your wealth plan. Who? and the how. Those two elements are what you really need to be focused on. When you figure that out, it's actually very easy to update beneficiaries. It's very easy to go through transfer on death. It's very easy to update wills. It's very easy to update trusts, all of the documents to make that happen. So look at the who, look at the how, and solicit the people that you need to in order to make this happen. So state attorneys are going to be a vital piece of this because they're going to be the ones that draft a lot of the documentation. Wealth planners are going to be another element of this because once we have the documents directed and drafted, we need to make sure that they're going to be enacted. 
So it's a difference between the draft and the enactment. We can have documents drafted. We can have them signed. We can have them uh, in a nice, beautiful binder, ready to go. But if we don't actually do the work of enactment, of making sure that the accounts are taken care of, that everything is registered in the correct way, it doesn't matter. It's just going to be that, that nice looking binder that's going to sit on the shelf. And we don't want that to happen. So we have your estate planning attorney, we have your wealth planner, we have your CPA as needed to step in and talk about these changes. But So that's the, the implementation piece of it. But once we know the who, once we know the how, it's easy to implement, it's easy to do all of these things. And it's going to be vitally important to make sure that your wealth doesn't get fought over like Michael Jackson or Prince or many other individuals that you may know, whether they're media icons or whether they may be your neighbor. Many people don't have a wealth plan, a wealth transfer plan. Once you do, you can make sure that you are sleeping better at night knowing that that plan in place is going to be sound, that the plan in place is going to be one that's going to benefit your family and create that impact. Thanks for watching about wealth transfer. You know, this is the steps that we here at Lions Wealth go through. And as you have questions, as you want to know more about your own personal wealth plan, feel free to check out the link below and we will have a meeting to discuss just more about your wealth transfer plan and what it means to you. Now also, there's going to be video right here on the other processes that we go through here at Lions Wealth that you can actually talk through with your own wealth plan, utilize with your own plan, and make sure that you are taken care of. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video.